Hey everyone, we are Teaching Till Brush, and this is the fourth part of basic brushes. We're going to look at the fourth set of basic brushes in today's episode. So on our brushes panel, we've got our page one, two, three, four. This is the final page, and we're going to be looking at these. Starting up the top, I can give myself a nice flowery color, because the first brush we're looking at is called Petal. Petal is one of the fairly new brushes. It is directly affected by your size and color. As I move around, you can see how there's sort of a flower attached to my brush. If you just do a quick tap with your trigger, you can see it just makes these petal shapes. If I hold the trigger down, you pull that flower into other shapes. If you're wobbly, you get a wobbly flower. But if you're quick, you can make these long sort of orchid shapes, flowers coming out. It is fully dependent on the color of your ink. So if I switch to a pale, pale blue, I will get pale blue flowers. If you squiggle, you do bend and twist the petals. But you can do a lot of interesting flower shapes, that type of thing. Petal brush. Icing, and in fact, all three of these, starting with icing, instead of just drawing a flat line, we're actually drawing a tube. So icing would be like if you grab some toothpaste and squeeze it into there. You can even see it's got this texture to it. So as I draw the lines, it's acting as if it was a squeezed toothpaste or cake icing. Any sort of shape and form gives a little more solid mass. You can tell my highlights and shadows directly affect the way this guy looks. That was icing brush. The tune brush does the same thing with shape, but watch when I paint. It actually adds this sort of black outline to it. So if I draw over itself, it's almost like it was drawn like a cartoon. There's a black outline to the shape. 3D uh, artists tend to refer to the style as cell shading because it's supposed to look like cartoon animation with a heavy black outline. So the tune brush is to make cartoon shapes and outlines. Wire just gives you simple color. It's still a three-dimensional tube, so it still has mass, it still has depth, but there's no shadow highlight. There's no outline. So if I do a big blob, it just looks like a field of color until I change the direction. And then you can see the different shapes and angles to it. This is a 3D brush called Wire. This one works very well, especially with a very small brush size, for doing quick, sharp lines that look good, both big and small. This is the Wire brush. End of first row, wire, tune, and icing give you that tube style of brush. Spikes, again, I'm going to go for a larger brush. When you click and drag, it comes to a point. It starts at a broad base and goes up to a point. You can see there is depth and shadow to it. So I can do a lot of spikes and things going in different directions. You can twist them, that type of thing. So you can make different shapes, uh, give myself antenna, you know, that type of thing. There we go. Uh, but any sort of loops that end into a point, that's what this spikes is all about. Spikes. Lofted, this is almost like a calligraphy pen in 3D. As I draw it out, you can see it's got sort of a diamond cross section. It's a square shape being drawn out, extruded into 3D. It doesn't have much texture to it. It is a fairly smooth shape, but you can see it's got hard edges. It is a hard square. Lofted is what it's called, and you can do some very nice sharp design, logo design, that type of stuff using the lofted brush. Disco. Disco is a lot of fun because it's got a lot of motion. You can see it's got this oozy flowy. This case, I've got blue ink, so it's got blue highlights. Red ink, red 
highlights. And again, the size of the brush directly affects the size of the line that you end up with. This is the disco effect. Comet is a fairly new brush. This is also animated. It's similar to fire, but this is a full round 3D thing. Wherever you click, it is solid. And then we get this lovely sort of fire flamey effect coming off of it. If I choose a dark color, dark blue, you can see it's a very transparent brush. You can see right through it. So even if I choose dark colors, the brush itself, if I go for a very pale green, you can see it's almost white. If I move it against my shirt, you can see the background. If I actually go to a different environment, let's go to one with a dark background, now you can see the flames of the colors a lot better. This one is a translucent light effect. This is the one called Comet. Lovely brush to play with, and again, your brush size affects how it's going to work, how it's going to look. Lovely little flamey effect. Comet. Next up, the bottom set, one of my favorites, it's called the Hull brush. As for doing larger shapes, I'm going to start with a shiny hull. And watch this. With green, if I hold the button down, you can see how it's sort of building up this shape. And it's a full 3D shape. Hull brush. Now it's important to note you can't really do concave shapes. You can bulge things out as you go, but there's no way to carve back into it. So if I wanted to do a bowl, I'd almost have to do it in pieces where I'm doing the outer layers before filling it in at the bottom, that type of thing. So building it up out of pieces rather than trying to make it as one shape at one time. This first one, it's called Shiny Hull, because you can really see the shadows and highlights. It's got this real glossy plastic surface to it. The other ones work the same way. It's just the surface texture that's different. So a matte hull just isn't glossy. It's still shadows and highlights. It's still available in any color you want. Nice dark blue. but it doesn't have that glossy effect. It's not a shiny hull. It's just a matte hull. Unlit. This does not affect shadows and highlights. So this is very similar to the wire version where I can draw a shape. It really is a 3D shape, but there's no highlight, there's no shadow, there's no real sense of depth. So you can make 3D shapes with it, that seem to change and morph as you rotate around the object. Because there's no shadow and highlight, it's hard for the viewer to see depth on that shape. That is the unlit hull. Shiny, matte, unlit. The diamond hull is translucent. So you can make bubbles of different colors. Now I'll make a very pale pink bubble. If you do one bubble overlapping others, you still can see all of the separate pieces. So it's hard to build one large shape at one time without having to build other pieces that actually show up as separate pieces. But it's a gorgeous effect. Also, if we get up close to it and wait for a moment, you can see there's a slight sort of ripple to that surface, a slight wavering. So it really has that bubble type of feel. And because it's a brush, you can make it any shape you want. So you can make domes, you can make little spheres, you can make big flat planes that have this lovely shimmery effect to it, translucent effect. See things behind it, see things in front of it, that type of thing. So for our basic brushes today, wire and line tools, petals and spikes, animated tools like our Disco and Comet, and then the hull shapes, 
Halls to build up 3D shapes in the world. Basic brushes panel four. I hope this inspires you to try things out and have a lot of fun. By now we have covered all of the basic brushes that come with Tilt Brush as of June 2019. They do indeed add more as we go. Now that we've got the basics ones down, we'll be taking other classes to look at other types of brushes. But you know now, know enough to be dangerous. So get out there and have fun. I can't use the hull brush to write my usual subscribe message, basically because it's uh, 3D shapes. So we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. And hope you guys get the message and hope you see you in other episodes. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoy Tilt Brush. Have fun.